and see us some. Don, you're a prayer, aren't you? Oh, I hope so. You, yeah. <laughs> I'll invite you to commit this time to. Oh, well, I won't wait for the others. Dear loving Father, thank you for this opportunity once again to come together and to hear uh, another of our sessions. And thank you so much for our teachers and the preparation they put into it. And thank you so much for the fellowship you have amongst one another. And in doing so, we ask that you further uh, develop our understanding inside of your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I, I wanted just before we start, or as we start, to um, either either clear up or say something about three things that came up uh, last week, and then ask you if there was anything else. And um, one was about the form of service and. Um, I was thinking about that, and in Acts 2, um, we have a sort of vague outline, didn't, don't we, where the, the, it says that they met together, the church met together for the breaking of bread, the apostles' teaching, the fellowship, and the prayers. I may have got those in the wrong order, but those, those are the four things. And um, it's, it's in, in 150 that just, Justin Martyr, says when they met together there were readings from the memoirs of the apostles and the writings of the prophets these were interpreted by the president of the assembly so i take it we've got the sermon there prayers were said and then bread and wine were brought and thanks were given to god the father in the name of um or in the name of the son and the holy spirit and funny enough he puts to the best of his ability, which is an interesting little <laughs> phrase there, and then distributed, and the deacons were to take them to absent members. And I think in all that, we sort of recognise um, what we were told about a communion service, how we would understand that, and even to the extent where apparently when they met, they did take the Lord's Supper and included people who were absent by getting the deacons to take it round to them as well. So you've got that. that that's, that's the model. Then Tertullian follows that up in 200 by saying, we approach God in prayer, massing our forces to surround him. Now, I don't know what you think of that, uh, the idea that if we keep hammering on God, he'll start listening to us. But that's sort of the implication of what's been said. And he even goes on to say something like that. You know, God loves us to batter him with our prayers type of thing. That's what he's saying. So this is Tertullian. Um, we pray for emperors, those in authority, the security of the world, peace on earth, and the postponement of the end. That's interesting. What do you think of that? It's pretty well worth it. More time. <laughs> We, we, yeah, be, you know, this is, I think the implication is this is a simple world. We need to give them more time. And so while we're busy saying, oh, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus, to tell him, say, saying we pray for a postponement to give people a, a chance. Yeah, well, that was interesting. Because John Dunn. Yes. That's a mind. Oh, yes. Of God. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's interesting. Powerful. Attack my soul, physically yeah. attack me, protect yes. me. Um, yeah, not only being an amazing poet, but mm -hmm. Dean of St. Paul's as well. That's right. Mm -hmm. The other thing I thought was mm -hmm. there was one somewhere where I read in this, yes, about how they were expecting the end to come soon, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the opposite yes. of that, yeah. yes. So you yes. know, I guess you go from one or the other. Well, the word of come, Lord, because I mean, we've got in the New Testament, haven't we, um, where, where there's an example, and uh, they all assume that uh, Jesus is coming back before the beloved disciple dies. Mm. And they explain he didn't actually say that at all. Yeah, but, but it's expected to be imminent. So he, so he's, he says, uh, where, what am I getting to? Um, postponed at the end, we read the book of God, we confirm our confidence, we reinforce our teaching. There is exhortation, rebuke, divine censure, a foretaste of the judgment to come, 
And this is where we banish people who have been particularly sinful as well. Does what, does what, do, do, have we gone a bit soft? Have we gone a bit soft? Have we gone a bit soft? Well, no, it's, it's, we'll come to that because it's, it's particular sinful behavior. It's, it's, not, it's not banishing somebody who's telling lies. Okay. okay. There are three. There are. Th well, I'll come to that in a minute. I'll come to that in a few. Well, a few minutes. Um, exhortation, rebuke, divine censure, a foretaste of the judgment. Of so leading to foretaste of judgment. Question, what's the difference between a, a is a rebuke to a? I, I, I'm trying to work out. Well, obviously, there's two I would, things going on. Rebuke is one thing, and divine yeah, censure. I would. I would call rebuke. Again, you can tell me if you like, but I I would interpret rebuke as, you know, this is this, this is how we should behave as Christians. I, right. I think uh, that's divine what censure. Is. I think divine censure is saying, look before God, you cannot carry on like that and still be part of this congregation. Oh, okay, okay, because I I I mean. I'm just thinking this out, out loud. I thought maybe it refers to wrong teaching as well. Well, there, well, again, Tertullian mm -hmm. is is very particular about right teaching. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why I'm ways. thinking maybe divine censure is listen what you what you are preaching or what you Christianity is not right. Well, wrong teaching, you know, that, that I mean that becomes an issue. That 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 whole yeah. business of heresies is a but, massive. Yeah, but he doesn't call it heresy, so maybe I'm wrong. Um, not there, but uh, but yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I, it's, yeah. yeah. I guess yeah, it could mean a number of things. Yeah, but I mean, we come across serious heresies when we, you know, as as we as we come to things like um, Montanism, Marianism, those sorts of things. Yeah, that that I mean that's just, that's not just that's that that's not just a little thing. That says, you know, you can only baptize people on confession of their faith as adults. So that's not that way. It's much right. different. Yeah. Right. It's, it, it's just interesting you went, that's what the early church looked like. Have we gone a little soft? It just got me thinking. But that's yeah. sort of, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying we can answer that question, but, but it's kind of up there. Have, have we gone soft? There are still denominations which are much harder line. Um, um, but we'll, we've got to come to that because that. But when I look at that, that's partly what today's. But when I look at all the other. Or things, next week in particular about. When I look at a lot of the things that the early church are being rebuked for, and then people go, oh, we should be more like the early church. I'm thinking, no, I don't want to be more like the early church. No. And have Paul write Corinthians uh, to us. I mean, geez. Or turn up and say, as he says, you know, he. This this guy can't carry on like that. Turf him out of the out of the fellowship. Yeah, I don't have you that. seen that happen recently? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, in our church. Yeah. Oh, in our church. What was, your, yeah. what was the question? That fellow shouldn't <coughs> listen behave that way. Turf him out of the fellowship. Yeah. yeah. I've never. I, I would say I've never. To my knowledge, I've been to quite a few different churches. I've never seen that happen to a congregant. Only to a minister. Only to a minister. Oh, yes. Right. Well, so when you ask that question, yeah, then that, that, well, that's, that's really what the ball thing is. But I've never seen it to a person who would be yeah, a regular yeah, attendant. Ever, no. just to my knowledge. That doesn't mean it hasn't happened. It just happened. Mm. In my, and, it, and it's my comment is related to my circle of acquaintance sure. too. Yeah. It could have been plenty of other people, but sure. But I, I don't. So have we? Have we been solved? Well, it, I mean, that's. The, it's not an answer. It's just a question. No, no, it, it doesn't require an answer. But if yeah. you want to, you can have a go. Yeah. No. Hmm. But but I was just thinking though that if that's, <clears throat> I think it's, in some senses, because their theology is is so new. If I, I well, they're still arguing about. It. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's what I mean. And and I think. So then, in that at that time, it was very important to get to get the message straight and to make sure people were reflect reflective of that message in their lives. Right. I mean, we've got the benefit of 
couple of thousand years. Mm. So, but that, that doesn't excuse maybe that. Well, I think not. I think these days more people would self-exclude. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I think that's probably right. They'd go, yeah. no, this is not. Yeah. You know, they would self-exclude rather than something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas here, I think they're still forming. Yeah. yeah. What 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 the church? Yeah. And the one and place they the yeah. one place they might exclude themselves from and still still come to come to church would be from the Lord's table. Yeah. That might be the one place where okay. they would they would say that that's what makes a difference. Right. Well, that, that was a can of worms for now then. So anyway, we, I I didn't want to sort of really. Yeah. Yes, because that, that, that was just last week. Now that's we're, that's, we're, that's, that's like, uh, then he uh, Tertullian goes on to say, then we take a voluntary offering. So that was that was something that goes on, but it is particularly for people in need. Yeah. Okay. So that that was the one that that was kind of the form of service, and there's quite a long. Justin Martyr goes on to do quite a long description of a baptism as well. So. Okay. Um, you asked about singing. I, and I think we said, yeah, surely there was singing. I, look, Colossians 3.16 talks about, uh, um, what is it? When you gather, it is sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and, and so on. Okay, put them and there was, sorry? And build one another up. And build one, yeah. And so, and the Jewish tradition was to sing psalms anyway. And we do read the martyrs often went to their deaths singing songs of yeah. praise and thankful that they had been chosen as worthy yeah. um so i think it's fairly safe to say they did uh, though i doubt whether it would have sounded the same as what we understand yeah. I don't know. Yeah, thing. Okay. <laughs> now i th this was that that was that now the, the one was something that i missed and it was to do with the new testament and the and I I did put in the notes there were four they decided very early on there were four gospels and I just thought as a you'd be interested to hear this so four gospels um, this is uh, Irenaeus okay so we um, we're in about uh, what early one oh, 200, 150 Irenaeus. It is not possible that the Gospels can be either more or fewer in number than they are. Four. Since there are four zones of the world in which we live and four principal winds, while the church has been scattered throughout all the world and the pillar and ground of the church is the Gospel, and the spirit of life, it is fitting that she should have four pillars, breathing incorruption on every side and vivifying men afresh. Four was a magic number. What do you think? Oh, it sounds a bit like Greek mythology. No, it's it's yeah. an interesting reason. What I've put in the notes is I don't think we find that very convincing today. <laughs> no. But that's the way people thought. So mm. Irene says Why there are four Gospels. Indeed, all that sort of stuff. You can divide it by three and you get four. Mm. What's the three then? Three what? The Trinity. The Trinity, there you go. Trinity. Yeah. Trinity. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Well, yeah, here we really go. Conspiracy yeah. theory. Yeah. 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 We're, we're entering the Church of Numerology right now. There's only four great churches. Yeah. Rome. <laughs> Rome. <laughs> Carthage, well, Alexandria, and yes. um, and, and the LMAP 1030. Oh, yeah. So now it is a, a, this is a total aside. Uh, as, as you know, I was vicar of St. Luke's in South Melbourne for, for 11 years, and it was an old church, uh, Bluestone, 1850s, sort of mock Gothic. And they had in the sanctuary, which is where I put the music group, there are four <laughs> stained glass windows, and they are Matthew, Mark, Mark, Mark Luke, and John. John. Paul. Paul. Paul, what happened? Poor old Johnny. Matthew, Mark, Luke, it. and Paul. It, yeah. I must say, the first time I looked around and I thought, that's interesting. I was quite <laughs> taken by surprise. When I think Mark, Luke, and Paul. He didn't play for South Melbourne, that's the reason he was. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> well, I mean, John, John got a Guernsey insofar as the other stained glass windows often were from the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, but, but it didn't get it down. And there was an awful one in the entrance that was from the uh, from Revelation, which is John, which is sort of behold us stand. You, you know the behold us stand. You know the Holman yeah. Hunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that, but it was absolutely terrible. It was just. <laughs> anyway, that's that's by the way. Okay, now I've I've decided to give you a, a, a bit of a, a a sort of test, but it, I, look, it's not it's not anything serious, but it's to say how are we doing? Um, can we identify who said these things? Do you want to give them the anything back? about them? Them. what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it on the screen. Because you'll get this at the end and you can do it you again. It well. Now, I don't want you to shout out the answer because there's, 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 there are going to be a couple of smarties here who know already. Um, but I do want to give other people a chance to see if they can identify who said this thing or said or wrote. So I asked them whether they were Christians. If they kept it, I ordered them for execution, oh, I for I held no question that whatever it was that they admitted in any case, obstinacy and unbending perversity deserve to be punished. And, and some of you I know have got it already, but if, if I just give you a little while to think about it and you can tell me who wrote it, who he was, who he wrote to and roughly about when. You want an answer? I can see a couple of people know the answer without looking up on the internet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, the pain is. All to, yeah. <laughs> Some of these won't be in there. Okay, would somebody like to come up with a, a, an answer? Pliny the Younger. Pliny wrote it? Yes. yes. To Trajan. To Trajan. Yeah. It's about the dilemma of his facing about Christian. It was can you can you tell me who Pliny was at the time? He was a governor of Bith, governor of Bithynia. He was governor of Bithynia. Do you know where Bithynia is? It's in, it's in eastern Turkey. Uh, it's, it's, Turkey. Not, it's definitely not eastern West Turkey. Turkey. No. Western Turkey. It's northwest. Northwest. Oh, northwest. northwest. And uh, can you can you? It's it's. I just. I think modern Istanbul might even be part of the old Bithynia. It's up in that northwest by the, you know, where the, the Black Sea becomes the Sea of Marmara, you know, around there. Yeah. Um, can you give me a rough, rough year? 65 ish. Yeah, a bit early. Like first century. 150. 150, you're a bit late. <laughs> we'll get there. It's, it's, it's the early second century. It's, it's, uh, they, they dated. Yeah. Well done, one ten is very good. It's, they they say about one twelve, so it could just as easily be one ten. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's right. Okay, next one. This the, the next one I think is the easiest. Eighty six years have I served him, and he's done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my King who saved me? So again, take a, take a few seconds before Sounds somebody good. yells out the answer. He's the one who is probably going to get killed a few times. He was from Carthage. I, I love being with Carthage. That's what's going on. I can't understand. <laughs> okay, how are we going? Who do you think that is? He's something. What do you say? I call the first name. Start with P. The first name. Let's start with P. Maybe it wasn't as easy as I thought it was. Uh, it's, but, uh, um, it was the first one. Polycarp. It's Polycarp. It's Polycarp. Yeah, he'd shake. I was thinking how to express himself. Yeah, it's Polycarp. And who is Polycarp at the time? <laughs> he was a bishop of? Smyrna. Smyrna. Oh, you're cheating. Yes. It's like the two chickens back there. Close. 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 Yeah. So he's the Bishop of Smyrna. And who's he saying this? Hebrew Buster. Hebrew Buster. Hebrew Buster. Hebrew Buster. Knock him off. Absolutely, yeah. The people are about to knock him off. It's actually, I mean, the, he's the Emperor's representative, the proconsul in Smyrna. And can you give me a rough year? 110. You're going to be a little bit lighter. Yeah, 150. 156 there is. 
Actually, they say the 22nd of February 156. I don't know how they can be quite as certain, but that's the day. I'm just given. listening to a commentary this morning before I came here. Yeah. About public art. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. But it indicated in that in what I was watching that they, he invited them when they came to his house, he invited them into his home and gave them refreshments. So he knew what they were there for. Yeah. And then uh, he said, well, I guess it's time to go. It's, it's, it's actually quite a long story, which you probably don't really need to know. But I find it interesting in that they, they, they were... Um, he said that he wasn't going to retract uh, his faith anyway. 18, they don't quite know what the 186 years means, whether there was a bit of a tendency to exaggerate in those days or whether he was in fact 86 years old. Um, and uh, and they, were, they were going to uh, uh, um, cut his head off and then they decided to change their mind and burnt him instead. So no, then they also they, they called him an atheist and he said, no, you guys are atheists. Yes, he said that, yeah. Okay, next one. May I have the joy of the beasts that are prepared for me. I will even entice them to devour me promptly. So this is a guy who's virtually saying, I'm so looking forward to being devoured by these okay, beasts. Oh, who's this? Ignatius. No, no. Um, yes. Going off to his execution. Yes. Going to, to traveling to his execution. Traveling to his execution. Right. Absolutely right. And um, what's his name? And um, when? It, when is oh. it roughly? Uh, oh, Ignatius. No. It is Ignatius. It is. Yes. I'll put you out of misery there. It is Ignatius. Well done. It's one of his epistles. You know, Ignatius, well, you, I'm not sure you do, but you know, Ignatius writes seven epistles on his way yeah. to his execution. Yes, yes. And this is the ones of the Romans. Um, and I've got a rough year, a rough timeline. I thought I'm all wrong, so I remember. <laughs> Sorry? One seven. Uh, again, we're in the right century, but we're a bit late. So about, so. Well, yeah. Yeah. We're actually quite a lot late, but we're in the right. About one, one ten. Yeah, one ten, one fifteen. What happened with one ten? They had lots of lines. There was. Uh, had lots of lines. Who was the emperor? We'll, come, uh, yeah, the emperor. we'll go to the emperor. We'll yeah. come to that. That's uh, who's the emperor? Okay, no idea. Uh, we'll come to that later. Anyway, that was me. That'd be true. That'd be true. Yeah. Okay. This is harder, I think. You have <laughs> long lived an irreligious life and have drawn together a number of men bound by an unlawful association and professed yourself an open enemy to the gods and the religion of Rome. <laughs> that's his accusation. Oh, is that the end of the last chapter? Mm -hmm. That's his name. It's, it's, is it a famous emperor? It's about to go there. Yeah, someone it, arguing. It. It's a sort of. Uh, is it I'll give it away if I tell you. Is it a representative? It's like a deputy emperor. Is it a representative? Of is it, a representative so of is it is. It is. Right, so it is. It's those in charge. Um, might be might be easiest if you knew who he was talking to. Who's long lived an irreligious life and drawn to the number of men bound by an unlawful association? It's later than the others, this one. Later. So, third century. Uh, third century. <laughs> but that, the word irreligious and the gods is could it? So, it's a Roman talking to a Christian. It is a Roman talking to a Christian. Yes. And, and, we, and sometimes with early documents, we have to remind ourselves that. Um, Christian, uh, Christians were the atheists. That's right. Yeah. And the irreligious ones. And the irreligious <laughs> Come on, <laughs> check, check. Okay. Any, any thoughts? Any guesses? Ignatius. No, <laughs> quite a lot later than Ignatius here. Oh, this, this is a... He's being a... So who's addressing? Who's this been speaking? It's not a name that's particularly well known. I, it, it, I put in a, a hard one, and that was a bit unfair. <laughs> the emperor was Valerius, and the proconsul who said this was called Galerius. And it's 
If I tell you that it's in Carthage in 258, can you tell me now who is being accused? He's the bishop. He's the bishop of Carthage. Oh, bishop of Carthage. Wasn't Clement then? Clement. No. Just after Clement. Well, Clement's in Alexandria anyway. That's true. Um, Carthage. No. He, he is famous, and I'll let you out of your misery because he, it's, it's Cyprian. Yeah. So you remember Cyprian had been. Oh, no, I won't tell you because he comes up again. Okay. That's 265 or something? 258. 258. That's actually his, that's actually his death. Right. That's when he gets executed. Okay. And this one you might know because this is, this is a clever one. If the Tiber reaches the walls, if the Nile does not rise to the fields, if the sky doesn't move or the earth does, if there's a famine, if there's a plague, the cries at once, the Christians to the lion. I know. Who is that? Tertullian. 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 Right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely right. Can you give me a, a rough date? For some... yeah. This one? Give you a rough date, say 250? Probably a bit before that, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Or probably quite a bit before that. Yeah. 210. Oh, come on, that's not that's 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 generation. <laughs> that's, that's Tertullian in his apology, and uh, that's the sort of thing Tertullian says, which... Uh, it's a classic, which is which is pretty smart, really. And I, I love the idea. You know, if anything goes wrong, it's the Christians' fault. Yeah. It's like it's like you know when it rains in the fourth test at Manchester, it's the Australian fault. Yeah. 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 They should have won the first two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go on to who am I? So this is probably a bit easier. So try this. Who's this? Born 185 in Alexandria of Christian parents, father martyred in 202, and he was only prevented from the same by his mother hiding his clothes. What I'm trying to say is <laughs> he was he was following his dad. He was going to be martyred. He wanted to be a martyr, and his mother stopped him, right? A prolific writer and translator accused of reading Platonism into the Bible. So he's a, a scholar of Greek philosophy and uh, imprisoned and severely tortured in the persecution of Decian, you've got the years there, died from his injuries a few years later. Origin. Thank you. Absolutely Oregon. Was that Oregon? Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. Whether you pronounce it Oregon or Oregon doesn't really matter. Um, I, I would think uh, but he had it's got energy. a Greek root, so it's probably Oregon, but well, it doesn't really matter. Right. <laughs> so it, uh, it begs the question, why, what type of clothes would be hidden? All of them, so they wouldn't go naked. Uh, presumably, is a 17 year old. All of them, so they wouldn't go naked. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's that's a really strange story, really. Okay, next. Born, well, what a sensible, well, I say, what a sensible woman. Um, born about 160 at Carthage into a pagan Roman family. Practiced as a lawyer in Rome, became a Christian before 197, a very skillful apologist. He possessed the rare gift among theologians. He was accused of being incapable of being dull. It's not me. We should have a word with some of our clergy. We <laughs> which, which incapable of being dull. Who's this? Augustine. Sorry, I'm it's not Augustine. No, we, we're not quite up to Augustine. We've had him already, so. Oh. Who was brilliant at putting words together? It's Carthage. Tertullian. 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 Yeah. But he's, although he's born in Carthage, he's, he's worked in Rome, remember, as a lawyer. So, nice. okay, next is a Greek, yeah, born to Christian parents in Asia, listened to Polycarp in Smyrna, became a presbyter in Lyon, then succeeded Polycarp as bishop in Smyrna in 177. His major work is generally known as Against Heresies and is principally a refutation of Gnostic ideas. 
So that Lyon, where is that? One? Lyon's in Gaul or France. Saint Lyon. Saint Lyon. It's the same okay. place. It's, it's the uh, beautiful church. Third largest city in France. Yeah, yeah the gastronomic, the gastronomic center of the world. Atto, Paris. I, I know beautiful cathedral. Oh, 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 it includes Paris now. Oh, it includes Paris now. I'm just saying outside of Paris. Yeah, I'm just saying Ricky. Leon Cathedral is. Ellie Carpenter in place for the local women's soccer team. Well, there you go. The yeah. There you go. Ellie? Yeah. Yep. Um, who was the one who was busy opposing Gnosticism? Again, it's one of the classics. It's not. It's not an unknown. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Not Ignatius, but close. Yeah, no, it's it's a, 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 that's right. It's the one Irenaeus. Is, what do you say? Irenaeus. That's right. Irenaeus. Irenaeus. Yeah, Irenaeus is the one. Champion. Champion. Love it. Okay. Um. Next one. Born in the early third century into an upper-class pagan family, he taught rhetoric at Carthage, so we've got an academic here, but turned his back on career prospects by becoming a Christian in 245. He served as bishop in Carthage from 248 until his martyrdom in 258, and his major works include the lapsed and the unity of the church. The lapsed was a big deal, as you'll understand, and the unity of the church. We've had him already, he is. Oregon? It's not Oregon. Uh, it's um, no Oregon's in uh, no, he's not. Alexandria. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's not. It, the reason I'm saying we had him before is we actually had the year 258 before. Oh, I, I guess 265. Yeah, 258. Yeah. Galerius? Well, is Cyprian. It is Cyprian. Um, the, the thing about Cyprian was, uh, I, I mean, like a number of these early church leaders, he was super bright. He, and his problem, or people say his problem, a bit like some of the others, was that he read Plato into, um, into the Christian faith. And people like, people like Tertullian got very angry about that. Um, you know, what, what has Athens to do with Jerusalem type of thing? That, that's a sort of Tertullian uh, phrase. And, um, and Cyprian also, because he's, he's, he's a Christian, in, he becomes a Christian in 245, he's a bishop in 248. Uh, so there's a certain, there's a bit of jealousy going on mm. around the place as well, as you can imagine. He manages Scotland. Yeah, he's upstart. How did he get that job so quickly? He was brilliant. Yeah. No, that's 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 the <laughs> question. That's, that's the question. Yeah, you know, quite. Yeah. How did he get the gig? <laughs> yeah. I've been here 20 years yeah. and I still yeah. 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 Um <clears throat> and the last one of these, uh, born in Palestine, this time of Greek parents, early in the second century, he saw in Christianity the fulfillment of all that was best in philosophy. There's another one, particularly Plato. He was executed in Rome in the 160s, so he's quite early, confident of his salvation in Christ and refusing to renounce his faith. Yeah. See how these people of, we might today be inclined to call it syncretism, you know, that we, we, we've adopted this stuff. I, I think the Christian church still does, oh, okay. so might I say. Yeah. I, I, think, I think a lot of the Christian church is still very much... Um, it's would have been too strong a word, but taken up with with Platonism, I think it's still it's still Kent. around. Yeah, oh, can't do it. Yeah, yeah. The church. yeah. So, the church has been heavily influenced by Plato. Yeah, uh, to the extent where people often m just totally misunderstand the scriptures. I think. Mm. But who's anyway? Who's this? This is one that we haven't had so far, um, but he's as I say he's he's quite early. And um, yep, he's another martyr. And if I give the game away by saying he's usually referred to as if his second name is Martyr, Justin. Justin. <laughs> yes, that, was, uh, that was a sorry. Good that, that was a good. That was a good, no, that was a good clue. That was yeah. a good one. Yep. 
just in didn't Saint Augustine have a lot to do with the Plato? He did. We've got all these ones written out. No, this, but I remember mind. Augustine. I remember that. Augustine isn't brown for a couple of hundred years. That's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay, look, thank you for that. I, um, and I've included those in the handouts, so you can sort of look at that. Who devised that? Who asked? What? Did you devise that? All these letters? Who am I? No, it's him. It's all me. It's all me. I used to like you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? I thought. You can go back and read that. This would be. That's why I thought it would be. I thought this would be fun. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, this is fun. No, and it's not, it's not yeah. meant to be. No, no marks. Yeah, I'm, I'm not giving out gold stars or brownie points, right? Yeah, it's all right. Well, you certainly didn't with us. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, I was, if it was Gary, I was halfway to not liking him. Yeah, yeah. You know. that would have got you all away. Yeah. What I was trying to do was get, um, was get the essence of who these people are and what they've done, rather than find obscure quotes. So, you know, that, that was the general idea. So. Yeah. If I fail, then you can let me know after we finish. Okay. <laughs> Persecutions are the big deal uh, that I wanted us to um, home in on today. Um, um, in all these persecutions, I think we have to remember that Rome generally had a policy on persecutions, and that one was that it was generally tolerant. Now, I know it doesn't sound like it because we are so much homing in on. Uh, persecution of, of the church uh, from, say, what, 60 to about the 312 AD. So we're talking about, what, 250 years. And uh, those that insist on counting these things tell me that there were 10 serious persecutions during that time, you know, not not counting the little local ones where people were still executed, but you know, the big ones and but in fact Rome's policy was generally quite tolerant um, but uh, there are reasons why Christians were persecuted so the Romans in the particularly in the early days certainly tolerated the Jews and they tolerated Jewish uh, Judaistic practice and in fact that was the one group of people that could get away with not worshipping the gods you, you understand that in in Rome, and particularly in the Asian uh, province, uh, the province of Asia and Bithynia, and those Pamphylia and those places in you know, modern-day Turkey, we have got historically we've got Greek gods and Greek worship. So we've got Artemis, who's based we know from the Bible in Ephesus, and and various others, Aphrodite and so on, and worship of them. And now. It's, it's not an either or thing, but we're adding Roman religion into this as well. And the beautiful thing is you can do both. It's not a problem. And the only ones that were really exempt from that are the Jews. They're an accepted group of people. And so when in those days, uh, in the early days, Christianity is understood as a sort of like a Jewish cult, then they they come under the umbrella and they're okay. So do you, do you see how that's working? But it actually didn't last very long. And as time goes by, we've not just got the Greeks and the Roman gods, but now the emperors start to come into it as well. And that's a big deal. Um, as we'll see later. Now, if we can, um, can, I, yeah. can I ask a question? Did the Greek and Roman gods replace the Baals? Well, they yeah, they, they generally, I, I think the Baals were much more associated, weren't they, with Assyria and, yeah. and those places. And they didn't seem to be around in, uh, mm -hmm. in the Roman Empire at all. Um, almost as if, oh, we've, you know, we've, we we pass them. You know, that's, yeah, that's gone. We've we've got the real thing now. Okay, so that that was. So I mean, that was educated. You see. So the Romans and the Greeks took their gods to these mm -hmm. places. Yeah, and the Greek. Well, 
that part of the world had been under Greek influence ever since well Alexander. So, so they were they were culturally Greek, okay. and uh, and so Greek philosophy, yeah, and and religion. It's all cultures all tied up. I mean, there are lots of places in the world where cultures tied up with religion mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. and that's it. So that's all part of who you are. But then the Romans, everybody's speaking Greek basically. But the Romans are starting to bring in Latin. So Latin, Latin starts to become the language of the educated people. But they have their own pantheons as well. And did they bring their gods into Israel? Well, um, Israel by that time doesn't really exist anymore. Um, Jerusalem is overrunning. 70 AD, isn't it? Israel's virtually gone. And the Jews uh, are, well, they're already scattered, but now they're even more scattered. So, but the Jews have have, have privilege in all of this. So Christianity, but when Christianity, when they discover Christianity is not just a Jewish sect, then that starts to create problems. Now, I've put down as reasons for persecution you can think about this and discuss this christians were significantly different now the word i used is holy and um i'll, I'll we we understand i hope the idea of christians being holy um first peter describes it this way you must be holy in everything you do just as god you who shows you is holy for the scriptures say you must be holy because i am holy and it's shot through the new testament uh, so ephesians um even before he made the world god loved us and chose us in christ to be holy and without fault and again a little bit further on in 229 we are carefully joined together in him becoming a holy temple for the Lord. So is this word holy? What what does what does holy mean anyway? Set apart. Set apart. Yeah. Uh, now I asked that question in in Boyne Island, and they say it means being good. And I think they're wrong. I think <laughs> you're right. And I it it what what comes to me when I hear those sorts of answers is they probably haven't been taught properly. Um, and that disturbs me. Um, now, how do we live a holy life? What does that then mean as a result of being set apart? I mean, the fact that you're set apart means that you're sort of not the same as everybody else anyway. Um, so what does that mean? And I've put some suggestions. You might have more and you're free to disagree or agree. By their lifestyle, Christians were perceived as being critical of paganism. I'm, I'm saying by their lifestyle. I'm not saying they went around saying, you're all terrible sinners, repent. But they didn't participate in what everybody else is doing. Like mm. the <clears throat> Any other thoughts? When you say critical, by, by what means? The, uh, the the criticism is implied by what by how they live. Because they didn't participate. They they didn't conform to, yeah. to what was considered to be yeah. normal, appropriate behaviour. They saved babies from being uh, killed. Yeah. Or killed. You, yeah. 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 So that was that was. You're getting issue. you're getting ahead of me here. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But that's kind of, yeah. I mean, it's <clears throat> rather than taking the advantage of, you're actually raising others up. Is that the lifestyle? That I think you, uh, if you are setting an example, I think, as to holiness, human behavior, yeah. what is acceptable? If, if I can just. Got to step aside for a moment. My parents, my mother in particular, was very strongly influenced by 
a movement which called itself the holiness movement. Now, this, this isn't the same as this, but it's but the way the way that she saw it was there are certain things that Christians don't do. Now, some of them I thought were extremely silly, but that's that's neither here nor yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, those sorts of those sorts of things. Yeah. Yes. But this, but this is stuff. But this isn't that sort. Of, this is real on the line stuff. So I've put some examples down, and already Tony's come up with a couple. They were unwilling to participate in local feasts to the gods. So you have a feast to the god. This is this is the time uh, when we all get together in the temple at uh, at Ephesus, say, and this is a feast to Artemis, and the Christians say we can't go to that. Does that notable, make sense? Notable in their absence. Yeah. Um, they tend, they would often refuse to go to the gladiatorial contest. Now, you might think that, oh, come on, this is, uh, any decent human being wouldn't go to those. Yeah. In our own. But <laughs> yeah, but, but it's the Christians that stand up to it, you see. Yeah. yeah. Well, were were I mean, the Christians in the middle being eaten by lions? Yeah. In some cases, the, I mean, there's, the, there's a bit Ignatius, yeah, certainly refers to that, but... Um, yeah, but uh, certainly the things that go on in the in their theatres, every every town has a huge theatre. Mm. Mm. But I mean, you, you could even think of modern day examples. So even for example, if you're you're going to scale Everest, before you go, you, before you go up there from the, the last camp, you're supposed to do do this um, Hindu ceremony. Mm -hmm. But it's just a cultural thing. And if you said no, they might not let you up the mountain because who are you? You're criticising our culture. Um, yeah. But as a Christian, should you be involved in the little now, ritual and ceremony and praying? Is, is it all right or is it not? Um, and we've been through that with issues that we've come to terms with. Um, so that, uh, you know, we've got the Paris Olympics next year, 100 years after the 1924 Olympics. Where what's his name? Um, Abraham's or the other one. Uh, Harold Abraham's is the Jew, um, yeah. the Christian. Eric Little um, refuses to run because it's a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And we sort of decided that that doesn't matter anymore, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but that's it right, was that's the sort of thing. I mean, I remember in the 1960s when that was a big thing. Reverend David Shepherd stopped playing cricket for England. And he did. Brian Booth stopped playing cricket for Australia. Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah right. that's right. Well, I can remember yeah. as very young Christians, we were, we were mentored by some older gentlemen and they were horrified that we went to the football or watched the football on mm -hmm. Sunday. I, and we were uh, counseled very of, seriously about not doing it. Some of my seniors were mm -hmm. horrified that I went to football at all. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> I had to. Well, yeah, it is, so, I mean, well, it is a cult. <laughs> in, in Victoria, in Victoria. Well, we can get carried away a bit by yeah. this. It is in Victoria. I wanted to give yeah. you another chance. Yeah, this is from Jackie and I. We, I, I might have mentioned this before. If I have, then I'll shut up. But Jackie and I went, were lucky enough to go to a place called Zaragoza in northern Spain, and there's a basilica there which is dedicated to the Virgin. And in the in the basilica, and and the re, the reason that's there is that James on his walk from wherever to. Santiago, Santiago, de Compos, this Santiago de Compos, and he stops there, and he he was very dejected because none of the locals were responding to his message. So he decides that he will he will build a, a church there, which he does. And he, he was visited. He, was, he has a vision of the of the Virgin, the Virgin appearing to him on a pillar. So this basilica has a pillar in the middle of it, and a, a doll Looks on like top a of it, doll on top like of a Barbie doll on top of it. And our guide well, there was only two of us. We our local guide was taking us through. And he said, would you like to kiss the pillar? The pillar? And I went, what? No. No. And he said, oh, everybody does it. Yes. It it's, kind of an, healing, it's kind of it an expected joy. You, you know, it's kind of an expected thing that you'll do it. And we said, no, we're, we're quite okay with that. Anyway, he came back to us again and said later on, you sure? are you sure you don't want to kiss it? It's not a bit cute today. No, he did that three times. So that's just a, you know, a fairly come, come across a bit of that over the years. Mm. And uh, what yeah. I explain is, 
I, th I think this is where your religion becomes superstition. Mm. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Particularly yes. Spain. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, mm. Uh, mm. when we were growing up, we weren't allowed to play with anybody on a Sunday. Yes. And the kids came to oh, no, my they were And uh, I boldly asked my mother in 19, about 1968 if I'd go and watch Gordon play at Des Moines and break oh, cricket on Sunday. Okay. Okay. She backed down and said, you can go, but you're walking. You walk you've got to, if you're not back in time for church, that's the last time you go. Yeah. <laughs> that was a yeah. big, yeah. that was a big deal. I don't let me yeah. watch it. That was, that, was, that was huge. That was the first knockout competition. Then first time around 60 had a knockout competition in great cricket. And that was on Sundays. Yeah. Well, that, that was one of those attempts to be holy, mm -hmm. um, which I think was misplaced mm -hmm. now. But I was born that way too. Mm. Um, can, can I just ask you, you know, when you said, I agree about what is holy being set apart, mm. and you said it was wrong to say do good, but isn't that a result of yes, being holy often? Yes, yeah. it is. What, what I'm saying is that yeah, I that's not, that. I don't think that's where you start. No, no. Yes. But yes. Then I haven't, I had another question, but if you want to continue with that, did you have anything else to say? I no, I was just, I, I was. No, it, it was just that often when I go and do locums, that's the answer I get. Mm -hmm. And I think, I just think it's starting in the wrong place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, just I had another question about the Jews. Sure. Like, because there were a lot of concessions to the Jews, and yeah. I know that was historic, like, yeah. what were the reasons that they could do, they, it was okay for them to do stuff? I think it was because the Romans were generally tolerant. I mean, they weren't always, because the Jews got scattered as well, as you were yeah. aware, and they, they certainly didn't mind going and destroying Jerusalem and everything in it. Um, that was 70, but, but that was a direct response um, to uh, to serious opposition. I, I'm assuming they were, just, they were tolerant because they wanted the stability. Was the so, yeah. Yeah. I, look yeah. when when Augustus, when Caesar Augustus, who's the first emperor, becomes becomes emperor, he he he's sort of injured. This is Pax Romana. This is this is Roman peace. Now he's achieved it by beating everybody else up and killing everybody but it's it's peace and people are very grateful for peace and this is and the the subsequent caesars want to maintain some sort of peace within their empire mm -hmm. but they didn't do that to the christians i just saw one well I, I think i think when i say that romans in fact were generally tolerant mm -hmm. there are things that stopped them from being tolerant for particular reasons. We don't always know the reasons, but I think sometimes we do. And here are some of them. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's the Roman response is no different than the Babylonian response, no. yeah. which almost highlights the fact why God has intervened yeah. in the decision making. Well, it's saying it's saying basically we're scared of this group. Well, and, we're, and there are some other reasons why you might, which you, I'm sure you understand. We, we've had the low views. They would refuse to use their skills for heathen practices. You see, you're asked to um, cater for, a, say, a wedding in a in a heathen temple, and you say, "No, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not. I'm not going to build you a shrine in uh, in honor of Aphrodite." But they, neither would the Jews have. You know, no, like, but, it, but early on, the Jews would get away with I that. I was reading elsewhere that the, in the later part of the Roman Empire, just before it fell, a lot of the leaders are coming from the army. They were part of the military. That's where leaders coming from. And Very much so. And in the military, paganism was much stronger Very. in a sense. Yeah. So there's much more of a contrast. Yeah. And also military leaders used to, used to being followed and orders being followed. And uh, we, we'll come to something in just, a, again, seriously, a second. Slaves and children were treated with respect, which you referred to, Tony. Um, so, and all the people, too. Imagine, yeah. The burial and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So treated with respect. But this is probably, um, you know, they were uncompromising in their view of chastity and family life. Now, this is a contrast to the Roman 
excesses. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, you can read about uh, Nero and what was going on in Rome yourselves. Um, and Christians, hopefully, are saying we, we we can't be part of that. So that that's that's general. They're different. But I move on to the second one. So they were getting cancelled, really, is what you're saying? Permanently cancelled, not just... Well, I could imagine that they're getting accused of all the same things that Christians over the years have been accused yeah. of. You know, yeah. so your, your wowsers, your, you know, all this sort of stuff. Um, yeah. You know, why, why are you better than us? What makes you think you're better than we are? Um, so... They're accused of gross immorality and cannibalism. Now, that was very early, and we referred to that last week, and that was basically the communion service, you see. Well, when you talk, talk about, uh, you know, the, the love feast and the um, yeah. drinking the blood, right? Next, they were accused of atheism, uh, which we've also referred to. But, but what you're being accused of, you're actually insulting the ancient gods, aren't you? Mm. That's that's how you would interpret. What's wrong? This is this is great. Look look what happened in Ephesus when when Paul was there and started preaching and and what what happens? The people all gather together and yell, "Great is Artemis of the Ephesians!" Mm. For how long? Mm. Hours. Hours. <laughs> we see that happening in some of the Islamic world today. Same sort of thing. You, you, you know, you, you're insulting. How can you? You know, she's been our protector all this time. You know, how dare you? And the last one, I think, which probably is the is the um, is the overarching one, they were perceived as disloyal to Rome. So you're traitors. Was I right in saying that Christians wouldn't say? I don't actually know about that. I haven't read come across that. Right, I, I, I don't know. Has anybody it, else? It, 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 I did it. Right. Oh, I missed it. Case early on. I don't know. Mm. Maybe not. Yeah, they, maybe someone yeah. else totally independent about soldiers who were Christians. Yeah, the 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 so not serving know. in the army. I mean, there the have been. I, mm. I knew people when I was a boy who'd um, who'd been conscientious objectors mm. in World War Two. Yeah. Um, but I also knew many, many who were quite happy because they felt they were fighting for the right. Mm -hmm. um, but well, being I, disloyal. I had a South African friend in the 1980s who was over here and was going back to go to jail because he wouldn't serve in the apartheid uh, sure. army. Mm -hmm. sure. But in this case, it's more they wouldn't pay homage noble. to the Roman God. Yes. They wouldn't yeah. pay homage to the Roman gods. Um, yeah. and, that is, church, and that means... Yeah, you're you're kind of not one of us, and it's 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 kind of a well, it's even more serious, isn't it, than going down to watch him appeal this play and barracking for Canada. I, I mean, just just to give an example. <laughs> yeah, um, you're not going to do that. It's well, well, no. I was too. Right, it's more like during World War II. Yeah. It is. It's it's, it's much more serious. People take that much more seriously. Yeah. Yourself. You know places. <laughs> you know places in the world. You know places in the world today. You know why? Why, why did all those Russian guys get out of Russia before they were drafted? Mm -hmm. You know uh, that. And, and what's the general response to them? They're disloyal. Mm -hmm. They're traitors. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is a big deal. Okay, can I go on to serious lapses? Um, because this is, here are the three things that, um, that, that generally were regarded as being forgivable by God, but not the church. This is kind of totally yes. thing. Um, and these are the three biggies, sexual immorality, murder, and denial of the faith. They're the three biggies. And yeah, denial of faith was the big one when people were tortured. What was that one time? Denial of faith is the biggest yeah. of all. When people were tortured to. Yeah. Yeah. The the biggest of all is denial of the faith. Jesus. Yeah. Now, what do you do about that? Because the penalty for that is exclusion from the church fellowship and the Lord's Supper. 
So somebody who's committing adultery is excluded, as, I mean, when it's brought to light. Likewise, anybody who murders somebody, which you're probably not altogether surprised about, and then denial of the faith, so you're excluded. Now, we would still say, probably for all those three things, you can still sit in a pew, but we will regard you as needing salvation, probably. Would that make sense? So they would have excommunicated Peter. Well, mm -hmm. that's, right. uh, that's an argument that comes up later. Um, Are they in the yeah. Uh, God can forgive them, but the church can't, and that's <laughs> that's that's the kind of yeah. that's the kind of thinking. Wow. You see, we, we're the same. Mm -hmm. can, can I give you a, a concrete example? I was for many years um, an ordained sort of rector in Canberra Golden, and it came to light that the bishop had done something with some female, probably committed it afterwards. Um, people said, but of course he's forgiven. Yeah? He could be forgiven. He could be forgiven. And he was forgiven as he sought repentance yeah. for that. I mean, it had come to light okay. many, many, many years later. But a number of others, a number of us said, the only trouble is, his position as a bishop is now compromised. Mm. So in fact, he should resign and withdraw. That was, that was an issue. And it was a bit like saying, yes, God can forgive him. And he is absolutely and totally redeemed. But we as a church think that it's not appropriate. To be in a leadership position. To, for him to be in leadership. Yeah. Now, it's not quite the same it's thing, I know. We didn't excommunicate him. We had a vote. We, it finished up as a popularity poll, but I won't go into that, <laughs> um, which is a bit of a shame. But that's, that's how it was. You see, it was recognized that no sin is unforgivable. There is no such thing as an unforgivable sin. The only time that it's ever referred to, and I think Ken sort of referred to that in his sermon a couple of weeks ago, is when is when you actually start to say um, there is no forgiveness, there is no salvation. Yeah, there is no means of salvation. If you like that. Right, so no sin is unforgivable if you are truly repentant, and we can look to the scriptures for that. So, uh, so Romans 4, Romans 4, Romans 4. Um, so just when, wait a bit, people, people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, because of their faith in God, who forgives sinners. First John chapter one, if we confess our sins, he's faith and just will forgive us as our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And this was quoted in this argument. What about the prodigal son? Is he not forgiven? What about the lost sheep? Is he not forgiven? What about Peter? I was going to ask that. Is he not forgiven? And so, and so the argument raged. <laughs> but there's, but there's, there is an issue, though. Yes. Is that you can be forgiven, but you don't have an, you can't have an expectation that the status quo will remain, or that you won't suffer the consequences because, of your absolutely, sin. Absolutely, because there are exclusions that occur for a whole range of reasons. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't stop a person from being saved, but it doesn't give them that right of access. But, yeah. but, yeah. Now, yeah. In, in fullness of time, yeah. But but the question ends. That person is then in position to resume that office. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? But the question in the early church is that I mean, it is that can when you have committed a serious sin especially after baptism. So what difference does baptism make, right? Especially after baptism. If you do that, what, what is the penalty? Well, the penalty is exclusion from the church fellowship and the Lord's Supper. Can you be reinstated? 
Well, you could be, but it may not be with the same group of well, people. Well, you say you can. Well, but on the same different... group of people. Yeah, right? okay. Right. <laughs> There's a qualification of that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But, but to me, um, and we had this issue while I was in Chile, mm -hmm. um, why do you need to be back in your position? No, 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 no. no, but, but, no but I'm saying, like, years, years gone by, so, you know, you might have committed adultery, no longer a minister, you've repented, sure. you might even be back with your first wife, and then people go, well, you should be then reinstated. As a minister, I'm thinking, well, why would you want to be? Mm. Yeah, it might be okay. Well, you might want to be, but if God's pushing you that way, what? Yeah, yeah, but that's what that's what I'm saying. I'm saying you need yeah. to convince me that it's the right thing to do. Yeah, sure. But all I'm saying is, is that mm. is that we seem to have this black and white idea that you know you're out for good, mm. but it may not be what God wants. Mm. So oh. the other concerning thing too is our hierarchy of sins. Oh, that's that's a biggie. But, you know, it's genuine. Oh, thank you for saying that. That's yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank yeah, that's you for saying that. Well, they have a hierarchy of sins. Yeah. Do we? I yeah, think we do. We do. Oh, yeah, do. Really. oh it's yes, we thin. do. It's you know that's the biggie. Um, being greedy, and Cor not uh, oh, corrupt. Yeah. All that sort of. That's, that's that's okay. No, we don't. We we generally do not hear sermons about greed. No, no, no. Oh, no. 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 That's. There's very so many sins we find very easy to identify. Mm. Sexual sin. Mm. Well, that's an obvious one. That's an obvious one, but it's you know it's no more sinful than the incredible greed and exploitation that goes on. Yeah. Which I think is justified by the church in its refusal to speak up about it. I think the church justifies it in some cases, not just by refusal to speak up, but actually by embracing it for themselves. Embracing themselves. Yeah. You know, no, no, no. But that's that's a big issue. I, I actually the only the only blog I have ever written in my life was part of a you master's the degree. Yeah, and it was about just that. Mm. About yeah. about greed. Yeah. So yeah, we certainly have a higher rock. It's too close to home. I agree. Yeah, Based on first Corinthians, was it chapter in eight? In the Western world. Anyway, that's all fine. That, that's um but let's go on because we are we're going now to deal with something which is regarded as the most serious of the lot and uh, serious lapses large oh i've i've got callistus and tertullian um tertullian is much more hard line um and uh, tertullian says basically oh very good so you can um, you can uh, remit the requirements of repentance uh, on on adultery. What about apostates then? Why not them as well? And that really is ultimately the big decision because large numbers of people apostatized. Now, apostatized is a smart, clever word for saying they denied their faith. They denied Jesus. So they apostatized during the DCM persecution, which is 249 to 251. Are you going to readmit them to the church? There are all these people that have been killed for their faith. There are all these people that have been tortured for their faith and barely survive. And here are people that willingly denied Christ. And now they want to be part of the church again. What do you do? Do you see their dilemma? Mm -hmm. Um, wasn't there, sorry, and it might be getting ahead of where we're going, mm. but wasn't part of it, um, in one sense, there was a point where they went, if the church needs leaders, we need to survive this. To survive this, I need to say, yes, I renounce Jesus. And so I survive, come back so I can lead the church. That's one of the bishops took off. So you can well, Cyprian. 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 Yeah, Cyprian, say, Cyprian hey, left. Bishop. Mm. You also people who would uh, bribe officials saying, yes, they were faithful. Well, this is interesting because, and that's absolutely true, because especially during the um, the the later uh, persecutions, decent, and especially the later one, which was um, uh, Domitian, wasn't it? Um, 
yeah, they had to produce, we'll, we'll come to that again, I'm sure. They had to produce a certificate to say that they had taken a pinch of incense and offered it to the gods. Mm -hmm. um, and some would find a, a friendly town official who would say, look, please, can you help me out? And they'd issue him with a, what was it called, libellus? Yeah, for a fee. A certificate. For a fee. To say they'd done it. For a fee. Is that your medical certificate? Of yeah, yeah, for the chemist, yeah. yeah. They um, for the chemist. And so they hadn't actually <laughs> done it, but they had a certificate to say they had. Which also had people, I guess, maybe in the later times, where they're, they're given a certificate anyway, because yes. they felt sorry about it. They didn't want yeah. them to suffer. So. Yeah, because ultimately the, the, the people... The people actually, in the end, were horrified by all this. And so they were trying to defend the Christians. Your neighbors. So, but... So you're just coming back to the yeah. your analogy of the bishop. Yeah. Um, or uh, you know, the idolatry. The idolatry. Mm. The, um, it goes also back to how much sin exists within them. Um, if, they, if they've committed adultery, what other, well, as, as one of my favourite comic books once said, who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? That being, if he's prepared to commit adultery, then what else is within his practice or his thoughts that he is uh, within sin? Yes. So it's not just a case of adultery because, yes, that's a big step. Then just to say, well, okay, I know that it was wrong. I shouldn't have done it. But just to allow yourself to be drawn into that adulterous relationship, there's a lot of gates that were open and closed to get there. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I lie. do. And living the lie... Uh, not confessing the lie, hiding it, and being distrustful. So there's all these other sins that exist in this person, apart from adultery. So that's where I'm coming from too. And I think I'm saying what you're saying, and maybe take it from the you know, as, as somebody who's been involved in marriage preparation, you know, 150 or so of them. There's a big difference between look, it's, I don't know how it happened. It sort of, it, it took me by surprise, you know, that between that <laughs> and the person for whom it's actually Been an involved. ongoing behaviour. Yeah. 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 And, and for how long? Yes. And is it the first time? Yes. One, sometimes you'll never know. Yes. Um, but when it is discovered, how, and what other things are there? that God will know. Yes. And it's hard for us to sit in on judgment on what is a person that's fallen by the wayside. Yep. And and therefore you would then say if they're trying to recompense by looking for salvation, that's a long road, you know, for them because they've they've gone down that road the opposite road, a long way. By choice. By choice. And to come back is a long road. Yeah. When, when people, I, I mean, to, sort of Tertullian's thing against Callisto, and there are lots of other examples of this, is that, um, you know, when you start making this forgiveness too easy, then it, it sort of leads you into, we might use the uh, phrase cheap grace. Mm. 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 The difference too between forgiveness and restoration. Yeah. Forgiveness does not, yes, I think that's a good point actually. <laughs> forgiveness does not necessarily mean restoration to the same place. So it is wise for the person who's been stealing money from the church collection to say yes you're forgiven but we're certainly not going to have you back as church treasurer no well why not 
50 for you. Uh, that's the question, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> because you don't want to put temptation. Yeah. 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 And, and also it's protection. Yes. Protection for them, yeah. protection for the church, which is why we have prohibited persons. Mm. Protection for them, protection for young people. So it also shows there's some uh, retrib not retribution, more of a consequence. It's a consequence. consequence. Yeah. Yeah, it's a consequence. Yeah. So I once, of, I once had a member of a church I was at who asked me, well, for how long am I going to be a prohibited person? Oh. I went, mate, that's it. And I have asked somebody not to come to a particular church gallery because that's where the all the young people are and they're mm. a prohibited person. Mm. Like, you're welcome yeah. to come to church, but you come to this gallery. Yes, absolutely. And so I have and you done are, this. Um, and you are not going to be a kid's church teacher. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> they need to understand it's for this. Yes. Yes. Well, that's it. That's for your protection and for the protection well. of yeah. people. And for, the people actually, not need protection, but, he certainly does. but oh, also, yeah. it's for the reputation of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the yeah. glory of God. Very much so. Um, which is one of the big things about does restoration mean that you can be a bishop? Well, no, for the glory of God, you probably ought not to be. Mm -hmm. See, and, and here's a point, Nick, too, is that the fact that uh, Church is also in fellowship. You rely on each other as Christians to support each other as well. So you want to you want to have a you, know, you have the faith and the, the, the phrase in the song, the solid rock I stand, but you need support of Christians around you. Do you know what I mean? You do. And then and those Christians need to be holy. And let me tell set you set apart. And let me tell you what happened. That if you have somebody in your fellowship that their behavior is considered inappropriate yeah. for somebody who is in Christian fellowship and in Christian leadership, you point that out to them. Do you know what they do? Go somewhere else. They go to the church next door. Yes. They do, actually. And find themselves in leadership again. Yeah. yeah, and they're the same. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just giving you an. I'm, 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 I'm not going into specific actually, details. No, I agree. That does happen. I think well, I certainly know of situations like mm. that. Yeah. And, yeah. You yeah. talk about particular reasons. I have a problem with this discussion. When we're talking about people sitting, we give, we're quickly giving the, the third person. Yeah. What do you mean? We've That's we've had the issue in our own church. I know the leadership. Uh, I know we. I know we have resonated. I know we have. Well, once again, we're 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 in this one group. thing. Absolutely. What about this? Pick your pardon. But what about this? Is what oh, you're That's yeah, right. Yeah. But was everything on that that one thing? I'm not for a moment saying that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with all you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm not saying. I'm not even trying to come close to justifying it. Yeah. But when we talk about something, we've got to be careful. One thing. Christ said we're all sinners. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And the only difference is that we have got, we have forgiveness yeah. through our faith in him. Yeah. Mm. And in our hearts, we have sinned. And practically, we have sinned. Yeah. Now, I know I'm not naive. I'm not stupid. I've been a high school teacher for two years. <laughs> but we've got to be careful that we just stop, can't always put it in the third don't, That we don't come across as yeah. holy as yeah. 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 I, I can tell you. I can tell you. A conversation I have with my wife, and it drives her back. When I say, what if I look at, if I look at what King David did, yeah. you know, you highlight mm. Psalm fifty-one, wow. yeah. and I think he's a man after God's own heart, and yet he was bonkers in what he did. That's right. And if he can do it, then I can do it. And it drives a bar me to hear that. Mm. But that you're right, absolutely right. That you have actually got to come back and start looking at everything about who you are. Well, basically, and having been in sorry. ministry for a long time, I don't think anything surprises me anymore. No, and that's the shame <laughs> of it all. <laughs> but, uh, but then, and then that then it, it's really tricky, and which is why they've they had the problems, why yeah. we continue to have the problems is where is the wisdom in this? Because I've I've seen some expectations of a minister in this role and there is not one leader in the bible that would fulfill those expectations right. exactly. and this is the big complication this is the paradox that yeah. haunts us all the time yeah. but you can see if i can come apart from jesus himself nobody would be able to fulfill the expectations that they're saying oh if you take on the role of the minister of this church this is your expectations like if I come back to early church history, because we're running out of time, because yeah. the big deal for them is still 
about lapses of faith, because that's even bigger than adultery and murder for the early church. That's, that's the big thing here. During persecution, so those who are killed during the persecution of whatever emperor it was, take on the name martyrs, which is the Greek word for witness. Okay. Those who survive persecution are called confessors. Sorry. Confessors. Oh, confessors. confessors. So they confess still that Jesus Christ is Lord, and they probably tortured painfully, but they survived. Cyprian was a case in point. No, not Cyprian, Oregon. Oregon, Oregon was a case in point. Um, now, what I so thought... So the ultimate witness was to be killed. Yes. But you can confess it's not the ultimate witness because you've just survived it. Yeah. But what about all these people? What about all these people who, I, I mean, who was it that said, um, look, some of them, the, the moment there's persecution, they don't just have to, they, they don't just have mental turmoil over it. They rush straight off and, and do it. Uh -huh. they, they just rush straight off and, and get their certificate, mm -hmm. um, effectively denying Christ. You see, we're not faced with that, are we? Yeah. Not like that. No, not, not in obvious in ways. Like not that. in such an obvious way. So what I've got, I've got next about when did they take place? Now I'm going to quickly rush through these because you can, you can. I'll just give you some examples. So we've got in AD 64, we've got Nero, and this is the this is the witness of this is Tacitus, the Roman historian, who blames the Christians for starting a fire in Rome that destroyed much of the city. OK, I've got reference to that. I don't need to. You, you can find that anyway. Sorry, imagine. Yeah. Are the Christians blamed? We blame Nero. But the Christ, yeah, Nero, Nero, Nero blames, blames Christians. This is, what, this is what Tacitus says. We all blame Nero. He says, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most ex exquisite tortures yeah. on a class hated for their abominations called Christians mm -hmm. by the populace. Etc. Etc. And Suetonius talks about this class of men mm. given to a new and wicked superstition. So mm. they're being blamed. So that's Nero. Mm. So is Nero's mindset different to Paul before his conversion? Mm. <laughs> Good question. I don't know. You might have to ask a psychologist. That's a really interesting question. Um, but, uh, but I did read somewhere that. Uh, Roman society have actually thought Nero went, went, went a bit over the top in blaming the Christians. I think they did. And they actually said, oh, well, actually, he's protesting too much a bit here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a very convenient yes. group that he could pin the blame to. Now, the next one I've got is Domitian. Mm. And it's difficult really to know the severity and length of that persecution, but this is almost certainly what Rev the book of Revelation refers to. So you've got, say, in the letter to Smyrna in Revelation 2, uh, don't be afraid, suffer, remain faithful even unto death and I'll give you the crown of life, that sort of thing. If you're faithful unto death, I'll give you the crown of life. And there's a lot about persecution and they, that seems to be what, what is referred to then. Then we've got Pliny and Trajan and we've, heard about earlier, what am I supposed to do? You know, I, I know there's something they should be in trouble for, but I haven't quite worked out what it is yet. Um, then you've got the, I've got the reference to Ignatius, uh, and he's the Bishop of Smyrna and he's martyred. And he's the guy who is threatened with uh, beheading and says 18, six years, I have served my King and he's done me no wrong. How can I deny him now? Polycarp. Polycarp gets. Mm. Uh, sorry, no, that's sorry, that's not that's. Um, Polycarp's the next one. Um, no, Ignatius is on his way to Rome to be uh, executed. He's. Um, yeah, he's he's the one who says pull. Sorry, he's the one who says pull the beasts down on me. Yeah, yeah. bring it on. Forward to it immensely. I'll make them eat me. Um, yeah, sorry, Polycarp's the 18th, six years one. He's the Bishop of Smyrna, apologies. 
Um, Marcus Aurelius, we haven't particularly mentioned him, but he, it, it appears, particularly hated Christians, executed believers in Rome and in the provinces, North Africa, Gaul. And uh, Tertullian's response to that is only bad emperors execute people. <coughs> Tertullian had a good way with words. He's a Um Decius, which was really very big, and we're thankful that Decius was killed in battle in 251, um, <laughs> commanded all citizens to sacrifice to the Roman gods. Any who couldn't provide a certificate of proof faced death. Many believers were killed and or tortured, and many denied Christ. This was the most violent persecutions Christian had faced at the time and only ended when Decius was killed in battle. And that was the libellus, the certificate that they had to get, um, and was quite, uh, and was quite, really quite horrendous. And then in AD 305, Diocletian, in many ways, this is a funny one because Diocletian, um, we're going to talk about him a bit next week because we, we're homing in a bit on Constantine. Um, and Diocletian was just a, a little bit before Constantine. But Diocletian had been emperor since 284. And apart from Christians who know about his persecution, Diocletian actually comes up roses. He, he comes up as a very good emperor. Yeah. What he does, his reputation, it, he, was an arm, he was an army general, and, a, and it turns out a very skilled statesman from a working class sort of background. And he has to bring new life to a crumbling empire. The Roman Empire is on its way up. Diocletian is the emperor. What's he going to do? But for some reason, in 303, and he's already been emperor for 18, 19 years, in 303, he suddenly orders the destruction of church buildings, the burning of scriptures, uh, and the prohibition of Christian worship. And again, the historians haven't quite worked out why it was. You can maybe draw your own conclusions. They say this was the most vicious of all and was quite unexpected because he had tolerated the growing number of Christians in his court and in his own family, including apparently his wife and daughter. He tolerated that for 18 years. People were in prison, tortured and put to death. What was it, can you imagine, that made uh, Diocletian change his mind? It's clearly he was threatened by, by this. Or, or else he decided he wanted to another woman and then... Um found this as a way to get rid of the wife he already had. It's a little bit extreme, isn't it? Yeah, I, I've I've said said the <laughs> I want this other woman, so I'm going to kill her. So doesn't he see the Christians though as a thorn in his side? Oh, I, that, that, that's the only Why? conclusion I can come yeah. to. Yeah. That if they're growing, he starts to see them as a threat. And it's not only that they're growing, but they're in his family. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is it yeah. uh, that for him. Is there a reason, though, just because of the heart, everything that's happening in the Roman Empire now? Yeah, so I think it's 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 just to yeah. blame somebody. If, if I go on and say in, in 305, he abdicates, mm -hmm. which, he'd, which he'd always intended to do. And he sets up what we call the Tetrarchy. You know, the Tetrarchy Four, te yeah. Tetra Four. So although he, ab he abdicated then, th and I think this might give us a bit of a hint, his successor in the East, so we've got like, like two emperors, we, we've got sort of like two sets of two co-emperors, you know, or two emperors and two sub-emperors, if you like. Just as well. well, Galerius... Is, is the one in the East, and he seems intent on exterminating Christianity completely. And the suggestion is that somehow he had influence on Diocletian. Oh, okay. So whether that's so, we might come to that a bit later, but public opinion increasingly was horrified and sickened by so much bloodshed. And in his last official act in 311, Galerius is on his deathbed, and issues an act of toleration. Well, he's on his deathbed. 
um, he dies, and we all understand that 312, which we'll come to next week as well. And it means that times suddenly start to change. And, mm -hmm. and after next week, we, we want to ask ourselves, um, how was that good? But did we lose anything mm -hmm. as well um, at the same time? So we've got these incredibly severe persecutions just before it all changes. The um, persecutions themselves are only spearheaded by a, an individual, basically. Yep. Once the individual's gone. They, they're, they're very much, a, I mean, we might say at the whim of yes. an emperor who decides that this is this is too much of a threat <laughs> to me. We call them director generals in the public service or secretary. <laughs> when I had their own mark. And while they can't yeah. go around executing yeah. people, they probably they they, they probably behave in similar ways. Yeah, that's, that's an that scapegoat. That's an older. Yeah. It, it is still amazes me that the amount of persecution and destruction of churches and scriptures, and yet the scripture continued. Yeah. Yeah. They were never all destroyed. Yeah. <clears throat> the continual writing of the scriptures is mm. fascinates me. Mm. Um, up to Holy Island, Hindustan, mm. still transcribing. Uh, you know, and converting the Vikings in Dangling, and it continues. The fact that yeah. it was your apprenticeship in the ministry to retype it, or if you were given the privilege of um, re calligraphy the text of the Bible. And right up to what the 16th century people in the civilised so-called world are being executed for wanting to preserve the scripture. I should be in my um, great-grandfather's Bible in the 1920s, or actually it's before then, because it was actually fully illustrated wow. by, you know, the... Uh, and? The calligraphy. Oh, yes. Wow. It's been handed down. Oh, I'd better give these. This is more or less what we talked about today, um, including the bit that. No, no, just the top ones. The top 10 or 11. The rest is okay. Can you take one and have the rest of it? Yeah, we'll three. That was early ones. Oh, they're early ones. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's just my folder. We need to be early ones on the answers. Early ones? I missed out last week. I, the answers are not. I don't have any from last week, but I got one from the week before. Yeah. 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 Yes. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you. Let's be unit two. Gary, thank you. Um, I don't, but I can bring some more to the next week. I'll bring some extras next week of all of them. Who wants a unit two, yeah? But we've got to be here next week. Okay. Oh, here's why. Are you unit two? Gary? Huh? These available online. They are it's on the um Dropbox. Google the, in the Dropbox in the Google Drive. Yeah. In the School of Ministry. Actually, I'll show you. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, I can make them available. Let me just call it. Unit six is basically about uh, discussions about who could be.